Today we're going to go over finding and gathering reliable information using Britannica School High. Before we begin, what do these three things have in common? Netflix, Hulu, and Spotify. They are all paid subscription services. Netflix is a movie subscription service. Hulu is a TV subscription service. Spotify is a music subscription service. They might have a freemium plan where you get some things for free, but they all require you to sign up and pay. Today, we're going to be using NC Wise Owl, and we're going to be using paid information subscription services. Who pays for these subscription information services? Well, ultimately, your tax dollars. But the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction puts them together on this website, NC Wise Owl, to make them easier to find and use and access. How do you access NC Wise Owl? There are two ways. If you are on a school device, you can go to the fcschools.net bookmarks and click on NC Wise Owl at the bottom. Or you can just go to the Omnibox and type in ncwiseowl.org and it will take you to this screen. Once at this site, for today's purposes, we're going to high school and we're gonna click on Britannica School. You'll notice that it went straight in for me. If you are at school or using your Chromebook, it should go straight in. But if you're not, you might need a password. And I can't post that publicly, so you would have to email me at charityharbeck at fcschools.net. Or hopefully you already know from our orientation or having it posted in your room. So let's search. I thought a good topic to use was the teenage brain. I thought we could all learn something while I'm doing this example of taking you through how to use Britannica School High. So today we're talking about finding and gathering reliable information. For school, you might do that as a research project, but you might also just want to do it on a personal level. In this case, maybe you want to know how your brain works differently when you're a teenager than when you're an adult. So you'll notice, now that I've done this search, that it's displaying one of 10 and that it came back with 1,438 results. I don't know about you, but I'm not a big fan of looking through 1,438 results. That's a whole lot of results. So let's find a way to reduce that. To start with, you'll notice that up here you have three tabs. Level two is a little bit easier than level three, the reading level that is. Level one is a little bit easier than level two. Um, and they also have an elementary version that is easier reading level than all of these. So if you have um, dyslexia or you, or English is your second language, some of these easier reading levels might be good for you to use. Or even if you're just having trouble keeping the focus, sometimes that's a good thing to use at that time. But for today's purposes, we're going to use level three. We're sort of treating this as if we're doing a research project for our English or social studies class. So another way to reduce it is to look along the left here. These are all the different kinds of things it found when I put in Teenage Brain and it did a search. So there's articles, it's 1,438 images, videos, dictionary, magazine, web's best sites, primary sources, ebooks, and so on. Web's best sites is basically like doing a Google search, only this one already tells you the ones that it has vetted or evaluated and that have good sources. So this is um, one thing that you can use. These are not paid services, the things that you find here, but still it's found some more reliable sources than just a Google search. But for today's purposes, we're going to go look at magazine articles. Now, say I'm doing the research on the teenage brain. 
I'm not sure if these articles are exactly what I brain want. My brain is optimized for cinema. Hmm, I'm not sure if that's what I want for my project or not. So I'm going to just kind of scroll through and look at the titles. I'm going to do something you might not do often. I'm going to go to page two. Never underestimate the value of the hits that you might find on page two. Now, just saying that I'm looking through and I'm going to think critically and say, gee, none of these are really exactly what I want for my topic, but maybe there's some supporting information or some peripheral information. This one, unlike adults, teens don't perform better when the stakes are high. Hmm, that's going to compare the brains of adults and adolescents and how they're different. I'm going to try that one. So once I get to the actual, um, oh, well, that didn't work. Let's try that again. Let's back up and click on that site one more time. There we go. That time it worked. Sometimes you just have to try again. Um, so now we're in the actual article and there's some resources available to you here that I want to share as well. You can sign in to Britannica. I am not going to do that. Uh, you'll notice when I do sign in, I don't have an account actually. I was afraid that if I created an account, it would look different for students and educators. And so I didn't create an account, but it's pretty simple to create an account. But you'll notice you select educator or student, and that's why I worry that it would give me a different view. So I'm gonna skip that. But I have some other resources here I can use. This will send it. I could send it to a Google Classroom, or I'm gonna send it to my Google Drive. So I'm gonna click my account that I wanna send it to. I'm gonna give it permission. And it doesn't give me any notice, but hopefully if I went to Google Drive, it would now be there in the recents. Let's just go take a look. My Drive, let's actually go to recents. There it is right there. And it is in Google Docs format. So that's interesting. So um, I could have, I should have looked through the article before I did this. You don't really want to save stuff to your drive that might not be useful. So I had already looked at this before. So I went ahead and sent it. Um, so now if there was something I wanted to highlight, I could easily highlight in Google Docs. Also, since as it went to Google, when it sent the article to Google Docs, at the bottom, it sends you the citation information. So if you're creating a bibliography, it's right there. You just copy and paste that to your citation information. So let's go back to the article and let's look at the rest of these things. This is to favorite. So if I've signed in, I can favorite the article. This is to print it. So I could print it to a PDF and then save that if I wanted to. But frankly, I really like that it just went straight into a Google Doc. This will translate it. So again, if English is your second language, you could translate it. This is um, makes the font bigger. So if you want to do that to make it bigger or smaller, then you've got that available to you. And as I said, the citation information is down here. So you'll notice that it went back into this document exactly as it was. And the headings even show over here on this outline over the side. And that's it. We have found some information and we have gathered it to a place so that we can look at it later.